how do you refactor in Vim? Is it easy? What plugins should I use? In this video, let's break down how to refactor something throughout a whole entire project in Vim. I'll show you how three different types of people would do it. The hipster, the configuration wizard, and the neckbeard. Each of these people are going to refactor a variable throughout a whole entire project in Vim, and I'm gonna show you how it's done. So let's get into it. This is gonna be a fun one, so stick around. Now again, there are three levels of Vim users out there that I imagine, the hipster, the configuration wizard, and the neckbeard. And each one of these types of people would attack trying to refactor something in Vim a completely different way. So let me show you how this happens. In this example, we're gonna have someone change a variable throughout a whole entire project to something else in Vim. Let's start off with the hipster. Now the hipster is the guy who understands the NeoVim plugin ecosystem and uses at least a few plugins to his advantage, but maybe they don't have like the perfect LSP setup yet. He uses a French press for his coffee and definitely owns a record player. Now if a hipster was trying to refactor something in a project in Vim, it would probably go something like this. Let's say there's a Ruby on Rails project and the hipster wants to change every occurrence of the word posts to the term poops. I don't know, just to pick something out. Now the hipster definitely has telescope installed, but probably doesn't have a great LSP setup or maybe just not a great understanding of the LSP configurations. So they would use telescope to search for posts. Then the hipster would put this into a quick fix list with control Q. That puts it into a quick fix list from telescope. Now the hipster would merely go through for every single thing and manually change post to poops, navigating between the quick fix list and the file that they're changing something in. And they would just do this over and over again. They would probably use the dot command to replay their previous motion in Vim, but overall it would be a pretty manual process, although effective for sure. And then the hipster would save every file and quit. And then that's it. That's how the hipster would do it. So let's go over another stereotype of a Vim user. This one is the configuration wizard. Now this guy uses all kinds of plugins and maintains an insane plugin repository. This person probably made a few plugins themselves and potentially even has a NeoVim distribution under their belt that they created themselves. Now this user would know exactly what to do when refactoring a variable throughout a whole entire project. They would rely on their LSP configuration and just rename a variable throughout the whole entire thing. Let's see what that looks like. Now in this scenario, let's say that this user has a NeoVim configuration that looks something like this. They would have an LSP config that contains the ability to rename a variable throughout a whole entire project. That is the lsp.buff.rename function. So let's see how this user would refactor something throughout a whole entire project. Now let's say we're talking about this uh, same exact Ruby on Rails project. We would go into the posts controller and let's say we want to rename every instance of the variable posts to poops. Well, now this user would use the rename functionality of LSPs. So you type leader RN, which is the key binding they have for rename through LSP, and they would rename this variable from posts to poops just like that. Now this should rename this variable throughout the whole entire project. It's what the LSP offers up. Now this user would also go to the post variable here and do the same exact thing. It would rename post to poop. That's the singular version of poops. And then there we go. You can see that it's changed already on multiple lines, line 22 here and also on line 17 and on line 18, we've changed post to poop. This is what we get with our LSP refactoring abilities. Also, let's just say we want to rename the class of post to poop. Well, it's as simple as renaming post to capital P poop. And again, this would rename it throughout the whole entire project. If we check our file explorer tree, we can see that all throughout our project, we have different changes in our files because post has been named poop and the class of post has been named to poop as well. This is a fantastic way to refactor and the configuration wizard would definitely know how to do this. So let's go over our third and final stereotype for refactoring something throughout a project in Vim. That third stereotype is the neckbeard. Now the neckbeard doesn't really rely rely on any plugins and prefers to use stock Vim whenever they can. They use Vim for everything. They even use Vim for their alarm clock, which is probably why they show up to work late every day. This user barely has anything in their Vim configuration and probably runs a tiling window manager on Linux. That Linux distribution would definitely be Arch, by the way. So how would a neckbeard, or rather anyone without the proper plugins, refactor something throughout a whole entire project in Vim? Well, there's a couple of built-in features that are really cool in Vim 
trim where you can refactor something without any plugins. Let's see what this looks like. Now our neckbeard friend, when looking for the word post and refactoring it to the word poop, would just use vim grep. So they can vim grep for the word post throughout the whole entire project. And what that would do is it greps for a regular expression and puts the results into a quick fix list. So we grep for the word post and our second argument is the kind of file we're looking for. So we type find within this directory, the type is file. So now this user just found post in every single file. They can open the quick fix list by typing colon C open. Now this is every instance of the word post. Now our neckbeard has every instance of the word post in a quick fix list. Would he go through one by one and change these individually? Hell no. This guy knows what he's doing. He's going to use the C do command, which is a way of operating an arbitrary function on every file in a quick fix list. He can use C do with the said command. So you type percent %s, which will change something, and we give it a regular expression. So we want to change the word post to the word poop. And we want to do this globally, but also we want to have confirmation so we know what we're changing. So we type the letter C at the end of this command for confirmation. You hit enter and every single file on every single instance of the word post, it's going to ask, do you want to change this from post to poop? So we hit yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And it goes through every single file. And now the neckbeard has great control over what's being changed and how it's being changed. This is a very manual process, but it's also extremely powerful because you know what you're doing and you have great control over everything. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, nope, I don't want to change these. Don't want to change these because this is post CSS. I don't want to change this stuff. You see where you have the great control here, right? Then we go through every single file. And when we're done, we save every file and quit. And we're all set. So in this video, I just wanted to show off all the different ways you can do something within Vim. Now, every single one of these scenarios is powerful in and of its own way. The hipster uses telescope and quick fix lists. The configuration wizard uses LSP's built-in functionality and the neckbeard knows exactly what he's doing and uses just built-in Vim functionality to get done what he needs to get done. So essentially, the message of this video is you should do things the way that work best for you. Whether you're a hipster, whether you're a neckbeard, whether you're new to Vim, whether you've been around forever, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you, whatever gets the job done is what you should do. Now, if you like the Vim configuration that you saw in this video, be sure to check out our channel and subscribe because we got a lot of Vim stuff here. So anyways, thanks nerds.